Shit, no, worry. dude. I like I like people that are real, and motherfucker, you're real, and I like that. I don't give a fuck how big or small or popular or rich. And look, you're doing some good shit. I was just asking your advice before we got on here about certain things in coaching, about certain things on YouTube. You know, people learn from everybody. When people put you know, their ego in front of things and think they know it all. Those are the people that aren't going to have long-term success. They're going to have short-term success. When you put your ego to the side and understand that everybody you come encounter with, you can learn something from, that's when people start to elevate together. And so picking your brain on some things has been really badass. And I was telling my wife about your guys' you know, living in Denver YouTube channel, which I'll let you talk about a little bit more, but she was looking for one for Phoenix because we looked at moving to Phoenix. Right. That was a conversation we've had recently. Are we going to move to Phoenix? We're going to move to Dallas because we're talking about leaving Charlotte. And I'm like, dude, my my dude, Will's got this whole fucking show about this shit on YouTube and says other people are doing it. So I don't want to steal your thunder. I've got listeners, you know, chomping at the at the bit right now. Like, who's this guy? What the fuck is what is he going to talk about? I want you to tell your story of 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 how you got to where you're at. Uh, and I'm just going to fucking jump in and ask questions as we go that listeners are going to want to know. 100%. So, man, um, growing up, I'm a mama's boy at heart. My mom was a, a three-time Olympian in fencing. And, uh, oh, man, fuck. I, I really That's feel gangster like, right there, right? You, dude. She's fucking stabbing people? <laughs> she's legit, man. Dad played tennis, played music for Columbia Records. I was the uh, I was the youngest. I was the only boy. And I was the only athlete, uh, accredited athlete. I played about five minutes of pro baseball. So growing up, man, like, she, um, she taught me standards. She taught me energy. She taught me if you're going to do something like – really how to be intentional and how to do it and just how to set a standard for yourself. And that's where a lot of my belief came from. It was, it was secondary to before I even knew whether I should believe in myself or not. When you're growing up and you're a kid, I don't even know if you know what that means yet, but I was learning a work ethic and through a certain level of work ethic created some success through that success, created the confidence in, well, man, I can do it, but if you're going to do it, here's the level of, of intention you've got to have behind it. And so I want to give her a shout out, man. She passed away last year. So that's been something that like, you know, was a bummer for me. But I, I anytime I get asked this question, I love um, bringing up, bringing up my mom for that reason. I think there's a lot of great moms in this world that do such a great job. So it's always an opportunity to not only kind of share her story and uh, allow her to live through me. It also just gives me the opportunity to compliment moms that are out that's there. That's awesome, ass, man. But um, so grew, grew up that way. She was a hippie. My dad was a, a Marine Corps Vietnam vet. So that's an interesting dynamic, right, uh, as far as the household. But gr grew up, man, um, uh, we were broke as shit, but my parents loved us for the most part. I'm sure they hated us at times. It, sometimes it felt like it. But, uh, man, went, went to school, grew up um, through high school, played a little bit of pro baseball. I had a buddy. Tell me about, that, tell me about you said you played pro baseball for five minutes. Explain that. Yeah, man, it was, it was short-lived. It's not even worth – it's almost not even worth mentioning except for you have me go back so far. But – Long story short, man, I had a buddy pass away in Iraq on his first deployment. And right as I'm entering the professional level of baseball, I decide to, to make a pivot and I leave. I, I, don't, I don't know if I was ready for the, the business side, that side of, of baseball. I, I love playing baseball for sports. Um, not saying I what was- What position did you play? I, I was outfield and I was a pitcher. I'm left-handed. I threw the ball hard as shit, man. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to try that hard if you're left-handed. The ball does a lot of weird shit on its own and- I wasn't neurotic about it. You know, like I, I practiced hard. I played hard. Wasn't really neurotic about it. And I remember my senior year of high school, I had a buddy. His older brother was in the Marine Corps. And this was right as like the war is really popping off, right? This is 2003. This is right when George Bush was like, hey, we won. And then like the next day, shit just hit the fan and the war became real. And I remember we'd go on runs together. I was running to stay in shape because that was just part of it. Man, he was running to be a part of this big gun club and a part of something bigger than himself and talking about being a brother to his brother. Like, imagine that dichotomy because he was yeah. joining the Marine Corps. His older brother was a Marine. It's like, yeah, he's your brother, but now it's like he's this other type of brother to you. And, it was, man, it was romantic. And I, and that same, that same buddy passed away on his first deployment. And um, it just changed things mentally for me. And... Man, I'd never, you know, my mom was a hippie growing up. And we're talking real hippie, dude. We're talking like in fifth grade, we watched The Lion King for indoor recess. And my mom came in and talked to the teacher because she's like, hey, that movie has premeditated murder in it. Not allowed. Not okay. Yeah, dude. Like, right when girls are starting to like you, my mom is stepping in there saying that shit to my teacher. So, you know, like, I never shot a rifle till boot camp. 
Uh, I, I didn't know how to swim. I almost drowned as a kid. Like, not even a romantic story, dude. My big sister threw me in the pool as a kid. It freaked me out. She had to save my ass. I, I'm from Colorado. We don't have a lot of pools here. I played baseball growing up. So and during the summer, I wasn't going and swimming with my buddies. I was on the ball field. So I had every reason to not even try to learn how to swim. Never shot a rifle till boot camp, but I was burnt out on baseball. I want, and I, man, I just, I wanted to try something that I could honestly say was hard. Not for anyone else, but for me. And I wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself. Like, I, I think I just had a calling for more. I didn't know how to label it. I didn't know what to label it. My buddy passing away pissed me off. And I felt like I just had more, more gas in the tank. Something to prove to myself, man. So um, I left five minutes of, of pro baseball and, and I joined the Marine Corps. And, you know, I spoke to my dad about it because he comes from the Vietnam era. And, uh, you know, my test scores were, were, were pretty, pretty good. Right. So I, I pretty much qualified for anything that I wanted to do. And, you know, he's he's and my my dad, like worked on aircraft, like F-18s, like real smart guy shit. And he's talking to me about this stuff, man. And I remember him looking at me because I wasn't responding. And he's like, so so what do you like? What do you is any like you're going to respond? And I just he's like, you're going to go to the infantry. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, man, like and my biggest reason for wanting to do that was. If I'm going to go to the Marine Corps, like, I want to be a Marine. No disrespect to any other MOS. But from right. what I was looking at when it came from being outside the Marine Corps, that was the Marine's Marine, was was infantry, was special operations. And, man, I was super fearful. So I, I leave, I get out of baseball shape, and I get a little bit into more, like, military shape with some of the training. I leave, you know, for boot camp. And, um, man, I, I remember this is, this is a, a, a huge paradigm shift for me that I've used in business since this day. We were on the rifle range. I'd never even held a rifle, man, until boot camp. More or less shot one. And I remember all these good old boys from the farm and that grew up hunting with their dad. And I'm like, shit, it's real now. You know, like my dad was an accredited right. shooter. My grandfather was a World War II Silver Star, Bronze Star distinguished shooter. Like, real pedigree, man. I, I got an opportunity to really fuck this up, right, with the family. And I'm sitting there a little nervous, and one of my drill instructors comes up to me, and he's like, Grimes, what's the fuck's what's the matter with you? And when you're on the rifle range, you got live rounds. So in boot camp, this is like one of the few times they'll actually talk to you like a human because they don't want you shooting somebody, right? So they kind of right. they kind of chill a little bit and, and and humanize themselves a little bit. And I said, I said, sir, like he didn't have me speak in third person, all the weird shit you do during boot camp. I said, man, I've just I've never even held a rifle, more or less shot a rifle. And this dude, drill instructor Sergeant Graham, this dude gets down on one knee and he's like awesome he's like you got no bad habits you're a blank canvas do what i say how i say to the best of your ability you're gonna crush i fucking love you grimes and he gets up and just walks off oh my god and i'm just like oh dude it makes me want to cry to this day right i just was like fuck yeah like yeah i don't even know how to have a bad habit i don't know like you're right and man this is that moment right there man like that's when I got neurotic. This is when I really wanted to get obsessive and really go, fuck, no bad habits. Like if I really just push myself, like I know hard work, I know discipline, I know hard work from my mom, from playing sports at a certain level. Man, if I could take that and just embrace the fact that I'm new at something, where would that take me? And I had some talent for shooting. Man, I was, I was high shooter at a boot camp. I was high shooter on any range that I ever went to. You know, and at the end of my career, I had the opportunity to be the, the lead counter sniper instructor for division schools in the Marine Corps. And uh, I did part of my time as a fast Marine, which was attached to special operations. Did some really cool shit, man. And, but the fun part of that that I, that I really want to emphasize, because when people hear special operations or, you know, or like the infantry stuff and leadership, it's, it's so badass. And it is, man. But it all derived from just being new, facing some insecurities, having confidence in a work ethic having confidence and just being around the right people and the right, right. coaching and, and how that put me in a position to win if I could just apply myself and, and quiet the noise, quiet the distractions and just uber focused, not on an end result, not what my Marine Corps career was going to look like, not how badass I was going to be, not if I was going to win awards, just focusing on position, posture, side alignment, sight picture, right? Compartmentalizing, being in that moment and allowing a round to go down range and hit black every fucking time. Oh, 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 oh,